This lovely clock was made by Edward East in London in about 1661, just after the restoration of Charles II and the death in 1658 of Cromwell. And it's in the Puritan black style. It's a beautiful case in architectural Greek Roman style, but there are a few of the details which are um, not quite right architecturally, such as um, the roof here, um, the moulding uh, doesn't give you a rain drip as it is on the Fromentiel cases, which are very much more architecturally correct. So in contrast to the Fromentiel cases of this period, the detail of the mouldings here, um, they are not so crisp as a Fromentiel moulding, and there's no overhang of the top cornice, and there's poor execution in the mouldings themselves. But even so, it's a very fine case. And Edward East is again, very little is known about him. He was not only a clockmaker, but he was a jeweller, he was a banker, and he started off as a goldsmith. How he got into clocks, nobody knows. But he has made some very, very fine clocks, of which this is a nice early example of one of his first pendulum clocks. The dial is matted throughout, there are no spandrels, and the silver chapter ring and the nice blue hands, but engraved in the centre is a lovely Tudor rose. The blued steel minute and hour hand, they're just plain hands which do the job without being over-decorated. It's the Puritan influence again of keeping things simple and what beautiful hands they are. And in the center then, you've got this beautifully engraved Tudor rose with so much detail in, in the flowering petals. This was one of uh, Edward East's uh, favorite motifs to put uh, in the middle of the dial. Lovely half hour markers in between the hours. Uh, beautiful, the way that they just blend the Roman numerals together. And then the, the columns are correct emphasis, bases, and the, uh, the capitals, in Corinthian capitals, they're made out of three parts and all brazed together and then chased and then gilded. Above the turntable base is the base, the clock proper. And in a Greek temple, this level, the floor level, is called the stylobate. And mounted on here are the four bases of the columns. Um, with tradition, with the small fillet radius, a concave profile scotia blended into the torus, and both uh, with semicircular profile. Uh, the column then is let in and it makes a beautiful classical base to the column. The emphasis in the column means that the diameter of the shaft here at the top um, is smaller than the diameter at the bottom. And then this is made out of three parts. You can see the lower part here with the cast Arcanthus leaves, and the cap here has small coiled volutes. They're beautiful Corinthian capital. The central mount here is a beautiful brass casting with a shell, two cherubs holding with a garland of flowers and flowers. Uh, it's just attractive, interesting little mount. On the top of the case are the three finials the central one that you can see here with the face here and the leaves going round with the flaming uh, top. Uh, a lovely casting finished and gilded um, example. And the, the detail is just terrific. It's amazing to think this was made 350 years ago. We'll look at the, some of the details. I'll just turn it round for you.
comes round on the turntable base so that you've got the access to the back. Um, find the key. And there's a lovely plain back plate with this really deep, bold engraving. Edwardus East, Londini. At the top here, you see the count wheel, which measures out the hours. And because it's a very early clock, it's high up on the back plate here, driven by uh, a little four pins which uh, rev revolve this so that it goes round once in, in 12 hours. In later clocks, it was found, well, you could put this right down at the bottom um, and you didn't need the extra gearing to bring it back to the same 12-hour rotation. So here we've got the count wheel with the lovely engraving in the centre and you can see engraved around then is the number that it's going to strike. So it's just struck one o'clock We'll just move the hand forward. And you can see how the count wheel the drops in to the two o'clock marker there. Even the little apron on the suspension for the pendulum here has got a lovely little engraving of flowers. Uh, beautiful details. East clocks are fundamentally different from Fromentiel clocks in that the pillars are pinned at the back. They're riveted onto the front plate but pinned onto the back plate. Whereas Fromentiel made them exactly the other way around, they were riveted onto the back plate and pinned onto the front plate. So that it hid all these um, pins going through. There's nothing wrong with showing them but Roman Teal hid that away so he had a beautiful clean back plate. The pendulum is a short bob pendulum and it's swung from the top here with a lovely engraving um, covering the suspension lever at the top. Nobody knows anything about Edward East really, except that he was a jeweller, he was a member of the goldsmith's company, he was a goldsmith and he was a banker. But he became master of the clockmaker's company and this style of clock and its method of construction with the pinned on back plate, it was adopted by what was called the East School of Clockmakers because other clockmakers in London at the same time uh, were making virtually identical movements. Nobody knows whether they were all made by one and it was bad engineering or whether the, they all worked in the same workshop and copied this style. And they made this style and suddenly it all stopped and they all copied Fromentiel by riveting onto the back plate and putting onto the front plate. Another feature of these E-style clocks is that the hands have motion work so that, that they have a loose feel. Whereas a Fromentiel, this is, goes straight onto the main train and therefore it, it isn't loose. There's nothing wrong with it being loose, it's just more expensive because it has wheels to bring it across to drive the not only the hour hand but also the minute hand. So you get this loose style of the motion of the motion work. And um, Roman Thiel must have been a better designer because he was able to remove the cost of making these extra wheels to take the, uh, the drive to the hands as a separate entity.